My name's Emily and I'm six and I'm filming this. <laughs> so it might be a little funny while a little kid is filming the video. These are our guinea. These are guinea hens. Do you know what type of bird they are? These are guinea hens. See all our guinea hens? They're walking. And there's our chicken coop with chickens in it. So we're here today with our new uh, 164 foot, 48 inch poultry net fence. This is actually, this one's from Ken Cove. Um, and that was a little bit more affordable than our Premier One. So what we're gonna do is connect it to our Premier One fence, which is this one here. Uh, and I wanted to show this video just to show the differences between the Ken Cove, which I wanna say was $80 cheaper than the Premier One. As soon as I opened the box, I noticed a couple things. Uh, first, these vertical ties that tie the electric fence together these are the horizontal, these are the vertical. These vertical are stiff, they're stiff plastic, where the Premier is just this flexible netting. Uh, second, the posts for, the, for this one here are also fiberglass, they're these gray fiberglass posts, but the, the foot of it is actually, the fiberglass post is actually sharpened which is not like the Premier One, which has metal, narrow metal in the bottom, like this. These narrow metal ones on the, the uh, plastic foot, that's totally different. These are not even sharpened. So we'll see if the, we can even get these into our rocky soil here. Uh, but those are the kind of the differences that I've seen so far with this Ken Cove versus the Premier One. So here's the ends of the Ken Cove. You can see that this post here goes all the way down and then it's sharpened. It's a sharpened fiberglass spike with a plastic foot and then a non-sharpened metal brace. Uh, that's quite a bit more different than the, uh, the Premier Ones. The Premier Ones, you can see the Premier One here is a fiberglass spike that comes down, ends, and then there's a thin metal spike that goes here a metal foot and a thin metal spike that goes here. This is a corner post, a thicker corner post, which I don't have. So I hope I don't need those. If I need them, I might have to just buy them for the Ken Cove. So after opening up my Ken Cove, I unrolled it. It's way more firm. And the posts actually look a little bit hardier, but like I said, those spikes, we'll see how those play out. But inside the roll, this actually came with uh, an electric netting repair kit, some instructions for that, and a bunch of stakes and tie downs. So instead of offering corner posts, these guys actually have what look like tent stakes and tie downs so that you're gonna be pulling it at an angle. But there's a lot of them, so really I can make a circle out of this and tie down every single one, and it should be pretty secure whereas the Premier One offers those corner posts that you tie to and they get four, you get four of them, so you can really only ever do a square or a rectangle. So I set up half of this fence right now and a couple things I noticed, I'm actually gonna attach this to the Premier One fence tomorrow. A couple things that I noticed, uh, one, these uh, cords are not all nice and braided. They're not braided, but they're a lot tighter on the Premier One. These are just kind of like all loosely strung together. Seems a little bit cheaper. Um, same clips, so very similar posts. These are the, the, the more, um, the stiffer like nylon strings that are a lot stiffer than the electric fence, which has the wire in it. I don't know if there's a difference in the quality of the wire that they used. This one actually does look like it's a little tight, tighter woven, uh, but there's it seems like there's fewer strands running through it. 
seems pretty good quality. This one has a couple of the big gaps on top and then these standard size smaller or medium gaps all the way down, all the way to the bottom. Whereas the Premier One has two rows of, in this upholstery, I think that's the two rows of the big ones, then these medium ones, and then on the bottom, it's a, they're the smaller half ones, half size ones. Because this fence, and it's not actually tied to anything right now, it's a little bit saggy, but because it's got that nylon, stiff nylon vertical lines, it actually stays a lot more taut. So even though it's sagging right here right now, the way it curves, it's not sitting on the ground as much as the Premier One, which you can see sags. I can't really see, but it sags quite a bit because it doesn't have that um, nylon in between. This one on the corners, like I said, it's got these tie downs. <clears throat> Just the camping stakes that wanna pull out. It does not really work as well as the, uh, the, this, the extra hard post that I put on, but it's pretty firm. It's pretty firm. It's doing a pretty good job pulling this taut. This back line I've got somewhat taut. I still need to pull some of these posts out and straighten them a bit. Uh, you can see this one's kind of leaning. That one's kind of leaning. We're on the side of a little mountain here. And so we don't actually have flat land here. And that's a problem for any electric fence. And that's kind of what I'm battling and what I'm dealing with and what I'm trying to figure out. As far as the best fence for this type of property where it's not flat. I'm actually at the bottom of a hill right now. You can see that this one's actually pulled over quite a bit and uh you know i want it to be like that but it wants to just fall over and sag because we're sloped we're starting to go back up a hill here and you can see it's kind of bellied out over a hill here but again with those nylon verticals instead of flopping on the ground it's actually holding it up pretty well and that's the ken cove I didn't get the, I didn't see a poultry netting option, so that's just the Ken Cove uh, 164 foot. I have to figure something else out here. So this is really sagging. But we haven't tied this one off to anything yet. Tomorrow morning, I'm actually gonna tie this up and we're gonna be pulling this so it lifts up a little bit more. Or well, here's our Ken Cove tag. And we'll see how it goes tomorrow morning. I just got done moving this uh, fence poultry net and uh, it's, it's, they're quite a bit different. They're quite a bit different size. They're a different structure. And so I was gonna kind of walk through and show you what I got going on here. Here's the Ken Cove. This is a corner of it. You can see the tie down there. That's what they give you. Another thing that I noticed that's majorly different between the Kenco and the Premier One is that the gaps between the posts is quite a bit bigger. That's probably 10 feet. Whereas the Premier is uh, maybe six feet. I really like the firm nylon that they have here. Uh, I think this is really gonna help keep it off the ground. Like I said, this is real slopey. Um, and so, uh, we'll see. I haven't plugged it in yet. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, the, the, there's not as many wires in the Ken Cove, I feel. You know, there's a few strands versus the Premier One. Here's my Ken Cove versus Premier One. Uh, section tied together. You could see, like I said, this is pretty loose, whereas the Premier one, they kind of bundle it together a little bit nicer. Um, the Ken Cove posts are thinner, a little taller. Premier one shorter, a little fatter. These plastic feet are already starting to bend, but I do like the fact that you can jam this fiberglass rod directly into the ground. Uh, and it feels a little bit more firm when you're kind of planting them down. So that's the 
size that we got. It's a lot bigger. It's a 164 foot panel and a 150 foot panel, I believe. And it made the space, I mean, obviously double the size, but it seems like it's even larger than that. I was moving them once a week and I probably won't have to move them for another two or three weeks at this point. So I'm out here and we have, uh, we've got this Premier One uh, IntelliShock 60, which puts off, uh, I think it's 0.6 joules of power. It's just got the solar panel, works really well. The only problem we've had has been inconsistent with putting out um, a higher voltage to the actual netting. Uh, and I actually watched a video on YouTube recently that said, and it was actually John from uh, um, Farm Market Marketing Solutions. He said that he cuts the bottom, he disconnects the bottom wire from so that the first strand does not have power. So the black one has no power, and then he disconnects it so that this first white one has no power, and then so that really the first one has power is this one up here. And he says he gets uh, a lot better results, and he's never had a problem with something getting underneath it, just missing that bottom wire. And what happens is it gets way less plant uh, grounding going on with the first wire disconnected. And so what I did was I disconnected it on both sides on my Premier One fence right here and on the Ken Cove. I actually left it on the gate just because I didn't feel like it was really that big of a deal. And what I got was almost with my immediate results. And actually it was, so it was consistently 22.5 kilovolts before and now I'm getting 4,000 but sometimes it's shooting all the way up to 8,000 and I was getting barely 2.5 kilovolts before enough where if I touched it it just felt like a tiny little buzz now I'm getting it a lot more cons uh, um, a lot more consistently 8,000 kilovolts which I don't want to touch I don't feel like getting an 8,000 kilovolt zap right now so that's that was kind of the, just the trick that he said just connect the bottom one baby chicks see we have our baby chicks that you want to keep but they're pretty, pretty cute see the chicken And all the other chickens. <laughs>